2024 has been a great year for retro gaming enthusiasts and we have been blessed with many new ways to enjoy our retro games. The addition of emulators to the Apple App Store has opened up a whole new world of gaming to a population of iPhone and iPad owners previously unable to emulate on their phones. If you are new to the emulation scene on iOS, then this video is for you because I'm going to show you how to set up RetroArch on your iOS device in this episode of Mikhailov's Guides. This video was also supplemented by a written guide that is on the Retro Handhelds website. Links to the written guide will be in the video description. Now before I get into how to set up RetroArch, you're going to need a telescopic controller if you want to get the most out of your device. This guide is going to cover controllers compatible with iPhones and the iPad mini. So let's start with a controller that only works on iPhone 15 models, which is the latest iteration of the Backbone 1. This controller has a USB-C connection for iPhone 15 models, and I like that this latest version has adapters to accommodate if your iPhone is in a case or not. There are also older lightning connection models, but they do require you to remove your iPhone case. Because of the case flexibility, this is my primary controller for gaming on my phone. These controllers can get pricey, however, with the newest model coming in at around $100. It's also worth mentioning that at time of recording, the iPhone 16 models have been announced and are going to be for sale soon. These also have a USB-C connection, so any controller that I talk about that works on iPhone 15, they will also work on iPhone 16 and 16 Pro models as well. While we're talking about USB-C controllers, let's take a look at something that you can go with if you need something a little bit more ergonomic. There are two controllers by GameSir, the GameSir G8 Galileo and the G8 Plus. The G8 has a USB-C connection and does require you to remove your iPhone 15 or 16 case. So I would actually recommend the G8 Plus instead because it uses a Bluetooth connection. That is much more convenient because you can fit this controller into an iPad mini and you don't have to remove your phone case. You also don't need to worry if you have a phone that has a lightning connection versus a phone that has a USB-C connection. Depending on which of these two controllers you are interested in, you could purchase them starting at around $60. And if you really wanna blow some cash, you could spend $150 and get the Razer Kishi Ultra. Yes, it's very expensive, but it is also one of the best direct USB-C connections you can get at least until the Absolute S9 controller is released. If you opt for this controller, you can use it on both an iPhone 15 or 16 and an iPad mini. Now, in regards to the Absolute S9, unfortunately, I don't have an advanced copy of this controller. However, Bass Derek does, and he did a review right here on the Retro Handhelds channel on the Absolute S9. My good friend Clef over at Game Tech Talk also reviewed this controller, and he did some really awesome things with it. So I'll leave links to these videos in the description so that way you can check out that controller and see if you want to back their Kickstarter. Now that we have our controller sorted out, let's go ahead and figure out how to set up our ROM files. I actually recommend using iCloud Drive for your ROM and BIOS files. If you have a Mac, it's a simple drag and drop in the Finder app. But if you're on Windows, the easiest way to upload your files is going to be to log into the web client on iCloud.com. Either way, you're going to create two folders, one named BIOS and one named ROMs. In the ROMs folder, you can create subfolders for each system you want to emulate to keep your ROM files better organized. Once your files are in iCloud Drive, they will automatically be accessible on your iPhone or iPad. Unfortunately, RetroArch does not recognize iCloud Drive as a ROM and a BIOS source, so you will need to copy your files to the following directories using the iOS Files app, and I'm going to put those on screen right now so that you can access them. You can also find them in my written guide on RetroHandhelds.gg. Just a couple of quick disclaimers here. Be sure you have enough room in both your iCloud Drive and your target iPhone or iPad. 
a 64 gigabyte device might not have enough storage space even though ROM files are small. Also, if you are using the iCloud Drive web client to upload several files at once, you might get some errors and you might need to re-upload some files. Now, as far as how to get these files, you will have to source them yourself. I cannot share them due to copyright, but if you're watching this, I'm sure you'll have a pretty good idea on where to find them. Once you have your file structure set up, all of the compatible cores are already part of the App Store install. What we simply need to do is create our playlist to be able to access our games. So in the default RetroArch menu look, there is a hamburger menu on the right side of the interface. Click that to enter the playlist menu. Then click Import Content and Manual Scan. Choose the directory where one of your systems is stored, select Scan this directory, then select the correct system name and choose your default emulator core. Under file extensions, if you are using zip files for your ROM library, type the word zip to ensure RetroArch scans it. And then just click start scan and repeat these steps for each console you want to add to RetroArch. You can now access the playlists and scroll through your ROM library for each system. In fact, as you are scrolling through your ROM library, RetroArch will automatically download box art if there is a stable internet connection. Now let's do a couple of miscellaneous settings. And the first one we're going to do is in audio. We're going to turn off respect silent mode because this will allow game audio to play when your iOS devices ringer and notification sounds are off. In settings, menu controls, turn on menu swap, okay, and cancel buttons if your attached controller has the Xbox style layout. In settings, user interface, on-screen display, turn hide overlay when controller is connected to on. You may also want to go into settings, input, and set up hotkeys for your attached controller. And that's it. Congratulations, your iOS device is now officially an emulation beast. Thanks so much for tuning in, and please give a like and subscribe if this guide helped you. Until next time, for Retro Handhelds, I'm Mikhailov, and I'll see you the next time you need a guide.